So to start off, we would like to, well, say out our author's purpose. We decided that the author's purpose was to inform that only Caucasians, but the North, to get an idea of what slavery was like and the hardships black people faced, and slaves couldn't read or write. For our complex idea of starting over here, we earlier decided that only through resistance can you change the respect of a man. And in turn, we thought, why? One of our first ideas for this topic was slavery requires strength rather than intellect. And then during this process of when we first started out with Frederick Douglass' introductions to his story, we had to believe it. For a start off, in one of his events, Douglass fell out due to harsh environmental and overworking issues. And one of them was also being that he was ill. Due to this, he ended up passing out on the ground, and even though he was still conscious, he was later beat for such negligence to get done to his work, even though he couldn't work in such conditions. And you have to take over? All right, so this complex idea, it probably got a little confusing right there. It said only through resistance can you change the uh, respect of a man. So in the beginning of the, the uh, article story or whatever, um, Douglas, his owner at the time, after he was uh, bought by Mr. Kobe, he, it, it was a, a bunch of events at first, like he didn't respect him. Uh, Douglas fell out, Mr. Covey, he seen how weak he was and he was like, get up. And he decided to hit him with a piece of wood. Uh, but after Douglas ran away, uh, Douglas ran away, he then came back and he decided to fight Mr. Covey, and that's when things started to change. So he resisted um, being a wolf to end up changing the respect of his master, Mr. Covey. Uh, for our second complex idea, we have slaves were treated, uh, they were treated cruel, unfair, and unjust. So there were a bunch of ideas that actually support this. They were. So they were beaten if they didn't listen to what their master said. So if they didn't, <coughs> you know, you got that. Um, they had to work. They still had to work hard regardless of their health conditions. And event was when Douglas was feeling dizzy, passed out, and he was still, he still had to work uh, regardless. And Mr. Covey beat him because he uh, didn't work. Uh, after after uh, Covey beat him, he then went. Douglas went to his uh, former master, who he thought would have helped him. After running through the woods barefooted, <laughs> stepping on rocks and other sticks, looking like a wild beast, as they said in the text. After going, after going to his uh, former master, he was hoping for some to to file like a complaint or something to tell him like, "Hey, this is happening, and like, can you help me? Can you get me out of this situation?" The master looked at him and he was like. I, I expect that you deserved it, that it was his fault that he was hurt. Um, it was his fault that he was overworked. And without uh, even asking about what happened, he told um, Douglas that he should return back to the plantation, or to Mr. Covey's. Yeah. Our last complex idea, we got power can only get you so far in the right or wrong hands. And this fact is actually true. Not only does it cover our first idea, but our other idea right here, saying that slave owners believe that they were more powerful than slaves. In the beginning, starting with Frederick, it was actually right. They were forced to do work that most of them couldn't get done as a team, but they all had to play their own part. And in turn, this led to his downfall at the beginning of his narration of his life, his biography. Later on, through hard work and facing trials from meeting people to like Sandy Jenkins and even trying to get help from his master Thomas, he decided to actually take up resistance and fight back in his own hands. Stating from one of the events that Mr. Covey, when, when he had returned, Mr. Covey had entered his stable with a long rope as he tried to tie him up. And in this course of action, Douglas decided to fight back even with all the help that Kobe was trying to get from his slaves. 
However, some refused, and Frederick overpowered them with his will and his judgment. <laughs> No, are you done? Good. Like, I'll wait. All right. <laughs> All right, I'll just finish it off for now. Even still, we didn't, for our intended audience, even though we didn't get to write it, we wanted it, well, I'm not sure what they wanted, but I wanted our intended audience to be for everyone who was willing to go against slavery. And back then, even though slaves couldn't read or write, there were still free slaves who, or slaves who actually fought to earn their freedom. And in turn, all the, abolition, all the abolitionists in the North could have maybe helped them out just in case that they wanted a little change of mind. Because think about it. If the North, or more say abolitionists, and for all slaves who wanted to be free, they could actually overpower everyone who wanted to be free. Can I ask you just to repeat complex idea number three? Power can only get you so far. What's the rest of that? Power can only get you so far in the right or wrong hands. I think this is a dangling or a misplaced modifier because I'm not making it. Just got a corner. I, I'm not understanding that. And tell me what ideas that came through. Yeah, what ideas did you connect to get that complex idea? That power can only get you so far in the right or wrong. But how does that get you so far? And why is the part in the right or the wrong hands? I'm, I'm, something's not connecting for me. So if you can help me bridge the gap, I'll appreciate it. How about this one? Even though it doesn't look like we haven't written in our ideas per se, there was events that did state that, well, in with power in the right or wrong hands, it can only get you so far. Okay, I'm gonna let you explain that. Who who came up with that? <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna let you explain it to me later because I don't want to hold everybody else up. So good job, group. Good job. <laughs>